Well, hello everybody, and welcome to Mini Monday Madness. <laughs> yes, on Mondays on my channel, we do mini paintings. These are three inch square paintings, and this is a watercolor one today of a snowy, um, you know, farm scene. I, uh, this is kind of off of the, the uh, fall one I did, and I decided to do a winter one. If you're a Patreon member, you can download the traceable, but otherwise I teach you how to draw it. It's pretty simple. Um, if you have any questions, please leave in the comment section. If you haven't been on my Patreon, go check it out. I have a link in the description box and on my about page. I have exclusive tutorials and downloads there. And it's just a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate. Also, um, I have another channel called the Amazing Art Channel. I, download, I show just acrylic demos. You can go check that out. So let's get started on our mini Monday winter scene. Alrighty then, so we're going to go over supplies. I have a piece of arches. 100% um, cotton cold pressed 3 inch by 3 inch square piece of paper. All my supplies are always listed in the description box. Uh, I go over my supplies as I use them. Uh, I have my paints, you know, in the description box. I have some in the palette and I go over them as I use them again. Um, I'll be using my Princeton number 8 long round and number 4 long round. Um, if you're on Patreon, you can download the traceable here. Um, someone had asked on Patreon how you even traced it. Basically, you print out the traceable, right? You put down some either graphite, you get your piece of paper, watercolor paper, you put the graphite paper down, you put the tracing paper on, t traceable on top, you trace it. And then the image will appear like magic on your watercolor paper. If you don't have graphite paper, by the way, I give you a link in my YouTube supply in the description box. Take a number two pencil, just go across the whole entire piece of paper like this, really good, really, whatever and flip it and then trace it that way and that is how you do it so uh, for those of you who don't have a traceable you know you can look at my youtube tutorial of the um the barn for this guy it's kind of when i went off of i decided to make a winter scene this is the fall scene and i'm basically redoing that fall one you know the barn again we talk about this rectangle square right triangle well kind of a triangle because it goes curve curve inward and then kind of top and then you got this right and then you make this the, the door and the windows you guys can do that and then i did like a vignette style and pretty much this is easy just doing the tr the fence you know trees is just triangles and the tree we're going to go over as I paint it. It's pretty straightforward, but if you wanted the traceable, like I said, it's on my Patreon if you're a Patreon member. But it's fairly easy. You guys can do this barn. So, obviously, I'm going to make my barn red. I've already had mixed up some red hair from a while ago. Um, I'll be using that. What I didn't draw, actually, was the little window here. I didn't trace that. My traceable is a little off, so I'm going to add a little more trees that are on the tra I mean, on the uh, tutorial that I have. But basically, the same. So let's zoom in. So whatever red you mixed up, I've already have this mi red mixed up from another tutorial I already did. And I'm going to use it. Why not? And we're just going to fill in that barn very simply. I'm going to leave the windows white. For now um, you can make them black or yellow like it's like lit up I'm just gonna fill in that air. and this is gonna stay white because that is the snow so unlike the barn from the fall which was a black roof we have a white roof now I'm just kind of fixing my uh, barn here Just gonna fill this in with red very simply. Now for the background, we're gonna have like green trees and, and blue, tr you know, different color trees, but I want like a nice pretty pale blue gray going in the back back. So I have this peacock blue here and I have a Prussian blue, whatever blues you have. I'm gonna add a little magenta. I want this like bluish gray so it's going to be like an ultramarine kind of color. 
Um, <laughs> sorry about the sound effects. It's like thundering and lightning here today, and that's kind of crazy. So we got this kind of ultramarine kind of blue color. I might add a touch of black to that just to get it a little grayer. And I'm gonna test it my paper towel. I'm gonna get it fairly wet because I want it really light, very wet. And I'm gonna wash this blue tone, very pale, over this whole background. And actually I could do the whole thing if I wanted to, but if you want the trees to be lighter green, I wouldn't do that because it's not going to work painting over that blue. It won't be lighter green, it's gonna be a darker green. So you see that little mound I have in the sketch. I'm gonna keep that one free of color, or you could just paint it in like I'm gonna do right now, because it's gonna be slightly darker blue than this blue. So you have that little sketch still there of the blue mound. It's kind of like a mountain kind of mound. I'm just gonna fill this in with that whole entire blue color. Just like so. Now we're gonna have to wait till that blue color dries before we head into the section. But while it's drying, we can kind of take that same blue color and we can kind of go here, right next to the barn. Just a little bit of that blue color. Make sure the barn isn't wet. And under the fence a little bit. And if you want to put little feet, little marks, I had little dash lines for it. Like they've walked in the snow. Just little feet marks. It's such a tiny little detail, but it's so cute. Again, you can see that fence. I'm just going to put that blue shadow kind of under the fence and over this way. Right by the uh, barn. So I'm gonna have to let this dry and then we're gonna come back. Alrighty then, it's dry and now we're gonna take that same blue, get a little darker shade. So you can add more pigment color. Same blue as you did before, just a little bit darker on those mound areas. Mine's a little too dark. I want it just a little bit lighter, so I'm gonna just wash out some of that color. Going down all the way here. And then there was one back here. Picking through by the trees. And you could have another one by the other trees too, if you wanted to. I might just add another one, make it interesting. And again, we're going to have to let this dry before we hit the other one. Okay, and now that that's dry, again, <laughs> darker pigment. I know this is fun, right? I'm going to put another one back here. You can keep going darker and darker till you achieve what you're looking for. Let's put a little one there. I think that's going to be good enough for me for now with the with the blue. Okay, let's work on some green trees. So we've got this olive green. Um, I think it's a little too bright, so I'm going to add a little Prussian blue. And a little of this Van Dyke brown, or can a little magenta, just to tone it down a bit. And you don't have to make your trees green; you can make them. Actually, I'll make it a little bit darker. Adding more Prussian, magenta. <coughs> okay, I might have to edit out that screaming, barking noise from my dog. Brady Thomas, you have to behave yourself if you want to be in my studio. 
Anyway, I'm making a dark green. Just make a dark green, whatever green you have. Just a simple dark green. I'm gonna put that behind the barn here. And another one over here. We're looking for different shades too. I might go back and get make this other tree a little on the brighter green side over here. And just go in here where it doesn't hit. See, you want different shades. Um, this can be more of a blue green. Again, same this color green. It doesn't have to be even green. It can be yellow. But I have that um, spike tree in front of it, so I'm gonna make it like a light yellow screen. A little bit lighter than that other one that I have here. So much paler color. Going here. And then I'll have that spiky tree in front of it. It's going to be brown or whatever color you want. But before I put the spiky tree in, we're going to do something with gouache. So I got that pretty green tree. This tree I might make more of the turquoisey green color. Not so much green, maybe like a blue green. Playing around with the color. I want it different. Like I said, it doesn't have to be green too, you can make it blue. Or even yellow. But I think the green would go work nicer. And then I'm going to do something in between all of it. Maybe on the more yellow side, actually. Yellow, brown, green. Yes. So it's kind of like a browny yellow green. Play around with all the colors. And it could be all blues, which would be pretty too. It's a pretty tall tree. <laughs> I'm gonna get that point. Probably should use my number four. To get the perfect point. Because it's a much smaller skinnier brush. I have more control. And there you go. So for the roof, we really don't need to put any color. If you wanted to put some a little bit of just a teeny bit, here I've got some blue. Just a little blue along the edge. Oh, it's turquoise on there. Just kind of like here on the edge. That's all. And then for the doors, you know, we get that black. You do the triangle, or if you screw it up, you can just always just paint the whole thing black and go in with gouache. Oh, see, that got really watery and it just went and just filled in that space. So, as much as I tried to be really tight with it, I'm not going to play around anymore. I'm just going to fill it in. <laughs> I am going to do the windows yellow. So I have my Cadmium yellow deep. It's so intense, so I have to tone it down a bit. I might add some, just a little touch of reddish brown color to it. Just to tone it down just a bit. So we'll fill in the windows yellow, like somebody's inside the barn. Let that dry, and then we'll go back over with the black. So we're going to let a lot of this dry right now because um, we want to put all these fine little details in. And you're going to need some white gouache for that. So we're going to let this dry and come back. All right, we're going to do some details with the white gouache. So 
you just get it wet, not super wet because it turns into watercolor. You want it wet enough so you can move the paint so it stays opaque. If you get it super wet, it will be very translucent and we don't want that. So I'm going to do a little line down. Oh, you could use gel pen and paint these bees. Simple line down. And these just these little bees going up. If you don't want to do that, you can find some other cute, fun things to do. You can do these little dash lines, just like this: dash, 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 changing it up from the bees. But I like the bees, so I'm gonna go back down and do the bee again here. And you could have done a darker green instead of white, but that's what I'm doing today. Bigger one. On the little mounds back here, you can make like those little white trees. You know. It's just a little teeny detail. You don't have to do that. And then I can fix my barn door. Voila. It's like magic. Now... I'm going to go back in. I'm going to grab my dark green again. Then I'm going to mix up. I'm going to do a little tree here. Just basically a line down. Let me zoom in a little more for you guys. There we go. If my nails don't look pretty, I'm sorry. Line down. Just little swoopy lines. See? Simple little trees like that. I don't have it in the sketch, but you could draw another one kind of here. Line down, little swoopy lands. They're cute. Just like that. See? I threw a curveball at you guys. I put some more stuff in. <laughs> um, I believe in the sketch I have that um, little spiky tree. Yes, I do. I'm looking at the printable. Right in front here. So you do black, you can do brown. I think I'll do brown. I don't want to make it too dark to compete with the pretty lighter colors. So I have this Van Dyke brown. Maybe add a little yellow to it. Get even a little bit lighter. It's like a mustardy brown color. And we'll see how that looks in front of the tree. So we're just gonna put that one in. This is the naked tree, as I call it. And we're just going to fill that in. I might want to make it a little darker. So I might grab a, the, the brown. Just do all those little spikes. Isn't that cute? Now we're going to do the super details of the barn which I didn't draw on the sketch. You can take a darker red and do like the clapboard going across. These are just little details. My brush is, this paint is dry. Come on paint, work with me. Going across. And then of course, make some red really deep red. I'm going to do like a nice little shadow underneath the roof line here and under here. And this red should be slightly darker. I didn't specify that. I'm going to make this a little bit darker on this side. It's Monday obviously, can't you tell? So I'm going to just kind of fill this in with that darker red. Probably should have done that in the beginning, but hey, we all make mistakes. And then I'll do a teeny bit of the dark red on that side. Yes, that makes more sense. My knees are tough, guys. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna have to let that dry and come back again because we want to paint the black or bleed next to that red. All right, I'm gonna go grab our black or Payne's gray, whatever you want to use, and do the windows. 
Why is this paint being so fickle today? Doesn't want to cooperate. If that's too tiny for you to handle, I'm gonna put a little black under here just to pump this out a little more. Um, you know, use a pen, 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 it's fine. So then we're gonna paint the fence. Cute little fence. You can't really tell that, you see that pencil line there? And if I erase it, you can't really tell that's the rest of the vignette. So I'm gonna take some of that blue, really pale blue, and just put some touching the edge here. And then over in here, I'm just tweaking this stuff now. Okay, and I'm gonna go back in with my gouache and make some snow. And this is going to be really simple. Just dots. Do da 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 da. And all the little blue mounds too. And you could put the snow in. Be don't have to put it in front of the trees, but you can put it just behind the trees, just in the blue areas. Depends on how you want it to look. You could put it like a snowing in the barn. I, I'm not sure if I want to do that or not. Play around with it. I might want to keep it just the way it is. You know, and then you get really technical. You can like add some snow grass. Just put a little brown. And the grass that comes through the snow. Little teeny grasses. Now I might actually erase that because I feel like it just looks like brown dots, so tiny. Get it going real fast if you're gonna erase something. You put it down, get that water on it, just like that. Grab your paper towel, whatever you have, and lift it up fast. Oh, it's like it never happened, right? But there's a snowy scene from Mindy Monday Madness. So cute, right? Super cute. <laughs> I like it. So you wanna get more detail, you can go crazy. Make a little more blue highlights on the snow roof. You could have put more, you know, details of the blue background. I might get a little more blue in here. Just shadow on this side. But that's pretty much it for today. It's a pretty quick Mindy Monday Madness. But so cute. Isn't that cute? I just love it. <laughs> uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Also, you know, if you're a Patreon member, don't forget to, to download the Traceable. If you're not a Patreon member, go over and check it out. It's a place for people to support my channel, which I appreciate so much. You know, us creatives are having a hard time too in this pandemic. I mean, I actually had one client tell me, oh yeah, that store that took all those designs from you just um, went bankrupt. Um, so you're not getting anything from that. I'm like, okay. So this is what's happening. You know, it's happening to everybody. So I appreciate everything you you do for me and coming on my Patreon. It really helps a lot. And I'm, I'm just so appreciative of all of it. And, um, you know, I just didn't... I didn't know where this journey of YouTube would go or Patreon. And I'm really excited about it. And for the new year, we've got some great things coming down the pipe. So... Thank you guys so much for all your support. Um, take care and have a fantastic day.